I did want to bring up and shift gears a bit to some tools, some tools for inspecting data. Of course, Scale of Agile provides us several different things. There's the Safe PI Execution Toolkit, which has a complete inspect and adapt template. It has all the PowerPoint you could possibly need to how I would orchestrate the system demo to walking people through problem solving. It's the great tool to actually use when you're prepping your problem solving facilitators. Walk them through the problem solving steps as outlined in this PI execution toolkit. If you're familiar with Safe Studio, Safe Collaborate, there's multiple templates here. There's Ishikawa diagrams, there's action diagrams, there's ways to undercover the valuable ideas, many different templates and tools to actually surface things. Again, about you know going back to mix it up with identifying systemic issues, use different tools. Don't use a five whys, use something different. Use you know one of these action templates. You know, use some sort of creative brainstorming template. There's all sorts of templates available in Safe Collaborate to help you surface problems, to help you identify corrective actions. And so those are the key things to use. And, you know, it, it's been the Doug show, but I did want to give Corby a chance to talk about um, Aptio's products and in particular target process. And so if you want to talk to these slides at all, Corby. Sure, sure. sure. So one of the things, um, so awesome, you know, awesome conversation so far. Um, the One of the things that we try and do is follow along with the idea that you need to have um, metrics and metrics that are weaponized. I really like that because unfortunately, I've seen far up, far too often how things do get, get sort of weaponized. People take things like velocity and say, wow, okay, so how come this team had a velocity of 100 and this team over here had a velocity of 20? You know, does that mean that the one that did 20 only did, you know, a fifth as much? And that's simply not true. The way that story points work is that it doesn't have to be homogenized across teams. So all that said, a lot of the things that we're asked for in an Agile at Scale platform are ways to measure against a broader set of people. So above the team level and more at the, the art level, the solution train level and, and things like that. So, so one of the ones that I like a lot, um, and again, you have to be careful with it to, to not use it in the wrong way is, is this, um, this uh, diagram. So what this is basically showing is um, when a team signs up for either a set of business um, a PI, PI uh, objectives or a, uh, a set uh, or a velocity, right? Um, at the beginning of their sprint, um, I wanna track how many points or what score they signed up for, and then what they actually delivered at the end of the sprint or the end of the PI, whatever the right, you know, right metric is. And what I'm trying to, try to determine is how predictable are they um, at delivering, delivering work, right? So um, in some cases, you know, you'll see, you know, great scores in other cases you won't. The takeaway from teams that you're seeing um, in, you know, maybe failing to deliver 50 or 70% or of their, um, their predicted score is something happened. It could be something simple like everybody got COVID or, or uh, you know, there's, there was some major, you know, bug that came up that everybody had to go work on, you know, production support for, or something else. But the key thing is the takeaway for management should be, how can I help? What what happened and, and how can I help make it better? And it's a great place to come to the inspect and adapt session and say, yeah, the reason we didn't make it is because, you know, we had these blockers and those blockers were never taken away from us. So, um, you know, we didn't get it done. So, here's something we need to do better. We need to make sure that blockers get cleared. So it's, it's a great tool for that. It's a, it's a, if it's used properly, it's not a destructive metric. It's a very positive metric because it can really help identify teams that are having challenges that aren't getting addressed. And I think it too, this is a control chart, right? If I go back to statistics, this is a control chart, right? We want people to be between 80 and 100% on a recurring basis, as, as often as yep. possible, right? So over 100% is just as out of control as below 80%, <laughs> right? 
right? right. And, and, right. and people don't often discuss that in their narrative. Right? If I have a team that is consistently delivering 120, 130 over, it's usually a behavioral issue, right? You know, I, you know what's happening there that, you know, they're not down, you know, it's it's sandbagging or or what yeah. is it what might be happening there that it's consistently happening right an occasional time where yeah we just knocked it out of the park and delivered all of our pi objectives committed and uncommitted uh, yeah that's going to happen but on a regular basis that's gonna, that's really tough to do right so, control chart yeah yeah great point great point so so around that um if if those of you out there are not doing team team PI object PI objectives and TP objectives. Really, really recommend it. Um, Aptio practices this uh, internally very religiously. So we have uh, sessions with uh, folks like myself um, that are basically setting our our business value scores against the objectives. We're giving our feedback on which objectives they're selecting, and the teams come back all the time and say. We can't commit to that because we don't feel like we can get it done. So it's an extremely healthy interaction between uh, the development teams, the engineering teams, and the stakeholders because it, it gives you a chance to really talk about, first of all, outcomes. Um, and uh, what, um, Doug, what did you say? Outcomes versus outputs, right? Yeah. So yeah. so outcomes, outcomes are what it's all about, right? Um, I have a lot of uh, organizations right now talking about outcome-based metrics and how they really want to try and drive their organ their organizations to be more um, outcome-focused because <clears throat> it's so easy to get in the habit of just producing work and saying, okay, well, I did, <clears throat> you know, I did six stories last 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 sprint. Well, th those six stories didn't deliver anything of value to anybody, so. Um, that's a that's an output, not an outcome, right? An outcome is something that a user can say, "Yeah, this is great. I, I really need this." So, I really think it's a great um, it's a great technique for organizations, especially those kind of you know newer to safe and and adoption of this stuff to to embrace early and and embrace hard because it really makes a difference. Um, target process is kind of a, because we you know again we embrace this internally, but we've embrace it as a tool for, for some time. And you'll see both PI objectives that can be decomposed into team PI objectives. You can then correlate PI objectives to work items like user stories or, or features. And so you can kind of tie the loop. I, I actually challenged Dean Laughingwell last year at the summit to say, you know, okay, so help me connect the dots between OKRs and PI objectives. And he said, we're working on it, <laughs> so, <laughs> which is a fair okay. statement. Uh, but but it's a it's really strong uh, capability uh, in the tool, but it's a really strong idea to practice um, as, you're, as you're working through your safe, safe journey. And in terms of pushing the limits, I know my current engagement, I won't say where, but we've really worked hand in hand with the target process folks at Aptio to build out flow metrics, right? To, to really use the tool to build out things like, you know, what is my, you know, you know flow capacity and my feature flow histograms, my feature flow time and really work through those. And there's been a lot of reception to that and it's growing, you know, and you talk about closing the loop, right? If I can close the loop on these flow metrics, that's awesome. So. Yeah, and I, I think, you know, one of the things that we get asked a lot, I'm sure you do too, is that is management wants some measure of, of productivity, right? As this stuff gets, um, you know, more and more mature and more and more people kind of start to understand the systems involved in the ceremonies, et cetera. Um, they, they're like, they're trying to figure out how to measure um, success, measure productivity. And, and there's just nothing better than flow metrics to do that. It really gives a, a good sense of things. Now, the the one thing you have to really watch for, and I, I mentioned this earlier, is uh, uh, in particular with story points. Story points were not designed to be like a uh, you know a standard definition. So a story point is not a story point, right? So mm -hmm. different teams will have different story points. So you have to be careful about how you try and homogenize 
or standardize your um, your your flow metrics. But in as a way to expose just the basic information here, it, it's just nothing better. And this is a this is an excellent example of, of how to use it. And I think uh, also target process helps with retrospectives and identifying action items, right? So. Yeah, and um, and you mentioned it earlier. It's like so if. <laughs> Unfortunately, you know, some of the early uh, INAs that I did um, as a coach, um, we tracked, we, we tracked the, the outcomes or the, you know, the, um, not the outcomes, the, um, you know, kind of the findings of the inspect and adapt sessions in, uh, in our tool, uh, Azure DevOps in, the, in that case. And that was good. We, you know, we got them recorded. We, we, you know, got everybody to agree that these were the issues that we wanted to take on. The next time I was, you know, we had the session, we're sitting there looking at the same damn things and going, we didn't do anything. We didn't, we didn't solve anything. So part of the story here is, first of all, you got to capture them, get them recorded. Second part is get that in front of everybody, slam them in the face with this stuff. This is, this is important, important stuff. People aren't going to, you know, bring it up if it's not something that's, you know, top of mind. So keep it in a tool, but then also make sure that well, well, you know, early into the the next PI, you're talking about how you're going to solve those issues for, for this one, because otherwise, you know, it this is how the sort of erosion happens with with these sessions because nothing happens from them. You've got to have real results. People have to feel like if they bring stuff up here. And, and again, this is why I, I brought the retrospectives and action items. Uh, this is where you're going to capture it, and this is how you're going to keep keep it uh, top of mind. Awesome, awesome. Well, you know, again, we covered the tools. There's lots of tools out there available, um, and I'm going to turn it back over to D here for a minute to talk about. You know, we can actually help. I mean, if you're having trouble with your inspect and adapt and getting the most out of it, we can help. 